This Civic Media Podcast is sponsored by UW Organ and Tissue Donation. Organ donations are desperately needed, and now is the right time to become an organ donor. Talk to your family. Get the dot. Save lives. Go to HeroicDeed.com. Good morning and welcome to the Earl Ingram Show. As always, you can join us at 855-752-4842. That's 855-752-4842. Good morning to you, Calvin. How you doing, man? I'm doing pretty good, Earl. How are you? All right, man. You sound like you... Uh... Hey, does he sound like me? Yeah, it sounds like he's got something. Are you, are you coming out with something, Calvin? I might have had a little bit of a frog in my throat, but I'm doing okay. Oh, okay. Okay, uh, well. I've got a bullfrog in my throat. <laughs> well, I, I went from tenor to, 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 to bass here this morning. This other guy, he's, he's in here and he's, you know, sounds like there's something that ain't right. Yeah, well, it's a, it's another morning. I'm, I'm, a, I'm awake. I'm alive. I'm just a little subpar. <laughs> well. Like I said, I can sing bass. Yeah. <laughs> if, if by now you don't know who that is, that's my co-host, Sandy Williams. Good morning to you, my friend. And how am I? Well, I'm, like I said, I'm hanging in there. Uh, another day. We had seven days. Seven day countdown. A week from today. Yep. Oh, it won't. It won't, however, be all over at the end of a week from today. First of all, we all know that the, there's a, a long counting process for all these uh, early votes and, and absentee votes, et cetera. So it'll be Wednesday sometime at least before there's an announcement. Although, although it's expected, much as he did last time, that that at least one of the candidates will undoubtedly announce that he. I'm using the the uh, the, the masculine there. That he is the victor. Uh, probably early on Tuesday night, leaving everyone to to try and clean up afterwards. Are you are you feeling optimistic? Well, if optimistic would mean that that uh, Harris was going to win, I, I guess I'm I'm in definitely in neutral. I can't tell. You know, first of all, the media has done quite a job of trying to make sure that it always seems like it's very very close because that obviously excites a great deal more interest to the media and the candidates themselves. All the things we get mailed to us, uh, texted to us, emailed to us to raise money, tell us that, oh, my God, the other side's winning. You've got to give money. So, I mean, the, the news we get is always designed to rattle our cage and, and make us operate out of, uh, out of something close to fear that what we want isn't going to happen unless we do something. So, you know, that tempers everything. I definitely have some form of battle fatigue here. I mean, in, in spite of the cold, I also, I think, have uh, something that's not quite PTSD yet, but there's there's a fatigue about this campaign. Uh, Donald Trump all the time, you know, every day. Uh, you know, he sucked the wind out of the campaign. I was saying, you know, before the show, my, my view of Donald Trump's grift is twofold. One, be in the press every day. Do it. Do anything it takes to be as uh, no, uh, to be as notorious as possible, to get as much attention as possible. Because when he's getting attention, Kamala Harris is not getting attention. And secondly, er everyone is out there to make apologies for Donald Trump. Because Donald Trump, the other part of the grift is promise everybody everything, and let everyone believe that the thing you're promising that they want is the one thing you're going to carry through on, and everything else is just designed to get yourself elected. So you know, Ron Johnson last week was was a was doing the revisionist apology for Donald Trump, saying, "No, no, he's not going to have across the board tariff increases, even in spite of the fact that Donald Trump promises this daily, right? Or that he's going to deport tens of millions of people, or millions and millions of people at least, right? Uh, Eleven and, million is what he said. Yeah. So you know, is he going to? You know, there are plenty of people who come on afterwards and say, "Well, maybe not. You know, he doesn't really mean that." So I mean, he's got all these apologists following him. So what is the what is the effect? Blunderbuss. Promise everything and let people pick and choose. 
So, Sandy, you, you, you said he says promise people everything. And I wonder, let's say Donald Trump wins. Heaven forbid. Let's say he wins. The people right now who are following him and saying he didn't mean that, will they do that once he becomes president? Well, you know. No. Well, he's a one-term president, okay? So oh, yeah. So does he care? I mean, all he wants to do, he says this too. He says, look, I have to say a lot of things I, that I say so I can get elected, right? Well, I think that's everything about what he's doing. He's doing everything he is designed to simply get him elected. What he does after he, after he's elected, it's going to be all about Donald Trump and, and securing power for Donald Trump. It's going to be uh, lots of what is in Project 2025, whether he wants to talk about it or not. It's going to be control of the Justice Department, control of the FBI, control of the U.S. attorneys around the country, uh, getting rid of the Department of Education. These are all things that he's definitely going to do. You, you know, Sandy, he talked about taking away taxes on the tips, taking away taxes on Social Security, taking away taxes on these things, all of those different things that he's talking about, revenue that a government that's already short revenue, and he's talking about taking away even more revenue, and yet yet the people don't even give that a second thought. Well, that's because he's also said, well, I'm going to get so much revenue from tariffs. When he was asked the question in the (laughs) Chicago Economics Club, about what he was going to do about child daycare. He said, well, there's going to be so much revenue coming in from tariffs that that's just a small line item in the budget, the the need for to child daycare support. We're going to take care of that. He meandered off into one of his weaves about Ivanka and this and that and child daycare. But, you know, his promise is so much revenue from, from tariffs that all this other stuff can be financed, including all the tax deductions, even though... Many of the people who are, are wise enough to, to realize that his tariff policy is, is harebrained will say, well, that's just a negotiating tool, and he's not really going to implement the tariffs. Well, he's not going to implement the tariffs. He's not going to get the revenue either, right? So something doesn't add up. You, you know, Sandy, the, the frustrating part about all of it is the, the people who just continue to support him in spite of what well-educated people who do things for a living say to totally dismiss people who are economists who have sent out warning signals that if if he does what he says he's going to do they'll be held to pay and the very people who he's promised to help are going to be the ones hurt the most they don't know that. Well, who are the truth sayers and who are these uh, who's experts? These are the establishment. These are the Eastern elite. These are the elite intelligentsia. These are the <laughs> university trained elite. These are the very people that Donald Trump has spent a lot, a lot of time and the MAGA movement spent lots of time discrediting. These are people who are all part of the deep state. This is the this is the enemy from within, the elite. And don't listen to them when they tell you that I'm talking hooey, don't listen to them because they're the estab- the very establishment that I'm leading you against. And and really, this all sounds crazy, but this is really, I think, in a bottle. This is a distilled analysis of what Donald Trump represents. He is the ultimate anti-establishment. He has captured the people who are angry with the, uh, the uh, elite uh, and, and the intelligentsia, the people who are woke, the people who want to talk about the things that they don't want to listen to or think about, uh, that that they are frightened by or angry about. It's the LBGTQ. It's the it's whatever issue that that see, it's the uh, it's the uh, critical race theory. It's the things that are damaging our children in school. It's anti Christianity. These are the people that are doing all of this to you. And so, if you want, to, if you're a pe- person who's embracing that outlook. Then there's nobody that's going to put a dent in Donald Donald Trump by telling you the truth about him. Because look, consider the source. So we're going to talk about a lot of things this morning, as always. But I want to pick one cherry out of what you just talked about to to begin with. Christianity. So many people who profess to be Christians are supporting Donald Trump, and. And I was reading this article earlier today about all of his 
Christian advisors. That's an oxymoron, man. How spiritual advisors <laughs> with Donald Trump? Yeah. How could that possibly? Well, he doesn't be? listen to advisors of any kind, so I, I guess ipso facto, he's probably not listening to them. But the fact is that he's got them, and and he's he's fooled all the people of faith. I mean, the main, what did he do? He delivered to these people the three justices on the Supreme Court who overturned Roe v. Wade. Okay, that was the pr- promise that was made. He kept it. Uh, he did that in spite of the fact that there's nothing about him personally that manifests Christianity. So there are Christians who are supporting Donald Trump who I know have to be embarrassed because, you know, I've had Paul's to read the Bible a couple times in my life, and there's nothing in any of those teachings that would lead me to believe that Donald Trump is somebody who follows any of the precepts of Christ. No. Humility, empathy, he, He's got kindness. none of that. Yeah. So Generosity. So, so, so those of you who are Christians who are listening, help, help me understand. Eight, as Sandy and I understand, 855-752-4842, where there's a correlation between Donald Trump and your and your. Uh, you know, your Christian walk, your faith walk. Man, there is none. Well, I think the only connection is that they want, the, the, those who are who are backing him want the government to do things that will promote their view yes. of, of religion, uh, which would be, uh, I guess, vouchers for parochial schools. It would be uh, putting more religion into the public schools. It would be uh, culture, the, the whole culture of, the, issues. The abortion issue. So it's all social culture issues, and and the the problem I have with that is that they ought to at least call the spade the spade. It's definitely contrary to the First Amendment, but they're doing it in the name of so-called religious freedom. So they sort of turn that on its head and argue that what they want is the religious freedom that's that's involved with installing religion. So I want to delve a little bit deeper. On the other side, Sandy, uh, on what you just said, 855-752-4842. It's Tuesday. That means Tuesdays with my co-host Sandy Williams uh, and you on the Earl Ingram Show. You're listening to Civic Media. Stay up to date on the latest news and information for your local community and Wisconsin by signing up for our free email newsletter. Visit civicmedia.us slash email to get started. Not a lot of kind of repetition. <laughs> well, I'm 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 kind of I'm kind of grasping. I've got the lyrics that down. Five, four, three, two, one is an important part. It's a it's a countdown. This move, this song is called <laughs> Countdown. And there you go. Well, we're in a countdown. I was looking for music that relates to a countdown. <laughs> this was the most extreme. Welcome back uh, to the Early Ingram Show. It's Tuesday. That means Tuesdays with the one and only Sandy Williams. You can join us at 855-752-4842. And remind us again. The countdown. The countdown to the vote. I could have had the count from. I didn't have the. Oh, 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 <laughs> one, five, four. Uh, five, four, three, three two, two one. one. Okay, so, so Sandy, um, before we go to the audience, this whole thing about religion. And ever since I was a young boy, I always heard about 
the separation of church and state and how important that really was in that the founding fathers knew the the potential the, oppression potential, yes yeah. of what could happen if you did that now we often hear people talk about the founding fathers and what they meant and how important it was why is it okay then that we in this instance we say well the founding fathers they, they don't know what they're talking about as it relates to Religion. Well, yeah, they want to twist it and say, well, the founding fathers were all Christian and the, and the language they used, they used words that related to Christian uh, uh, vernacular. And so, you know, it was, it's all part of the basis for this Christian nationalism. This was all birthed, I think, in the, in the Rex, by Rex Reed and the marriage that occurred between uh, conservative evangelical, the religious association that was put together by Rex Reed and Republican politicians, uh, uh, Newt Gingrich being a main one, who recognized the connection that could be made and the power that could be facilitated by getting these, this evangelical Christian movement heavily involved in politics. Abortion was the, uh, was the, the ripe issue that, that got everyone's attention and created the coalescence. And since the mid-90s, has been the paramount issue, you know, and, and it wasn't, uh, and, you know, what, and, and for Donald Trump, I think it was a matter of convenience. He wanted to grab a hold of that handle and uh, make the promises he did about overturning Roe v. Wade. Now he's found out it's politically inconvenient, and I should think that the evangelical movement would be dismayed by the, by the rapidity with which Donald Trump has obviously found it inconvenient to be, uh, to be anti-abortion uh, pro-life and how much he's bending in the other direction for political convenience. You, you know, Sandy... <sighs> but, but the problem with getting evangelicals heavily involved in, in the political process is that they, be, they began to, use, to view politics as a tool to be used by religion to promote religion. Let me, let me ask you, before we go to the phone line, so, okay, uh, understand the... The feelings of of Christians as it relates to abortion, but the other part of that is um, LBGTQ, and so Christians. That's another one of those things that they feel that they certainly uh, want to bring pressure on our government to kind of follow the precepts of what. They believe, and that other people don't have rights. But when you do these things, Sandy, aren't you taking away the rights of of people? Um, and and you know, you can be a Christian, or you can be a Buddhist, or or Hindu, or whoever you are, a Muslim. But that shouldn't in in our nation. That's the one thing that we were not supposed to be a party to. Well, imposing the imposing your moral will on others who aren't necessarily uh, accepting it themselves is the whole basis for the first amendment. That's what people are against Yeah, is the imposition of a, of a moral authority on people through the government in some process. And, and to leave everyone, you know, the, the, the precept behind the first amendment was leave everyone to their own, to have their own right to believe as they wish, which gives them the ultimate freedom to wish and believe as they as they see fit, which was something that wasn't allowed in the Europe that all these people left, and and was allowed here, and and so now the the notion of imposing religious belief through political or governmental processes would would seemingly be anathema to that. But uh, I guess that there's something kind of invidious about. The, the idea that you can impose moral will on others, your, your moral will or the moral will that you see, you can impose that on others and the government is the tool for that. And, and Sandy, one particular religion, not any others, you're not advocating for religion across the board. You're advocating for one standard religion. In the entire nation, that's what they're speaking well, for. Well, Christianity, I guess. Yes. The Christians, well, we got a lot of diversity. We got the Methodists, we yeah, got the Lutherans, right. we got the. Right. We got, but, but, yeah, uh, that's right. You know, the the idea that that Christianity is the required belief and that that's the one that should be accorded privilege 
within the within the political process uh, as compared to other religions. And, and that to me is a very troublesome thing because, you know, if the majority view became something other than that, how would all those Christians feel? You know, you know, Sandy, it is, again, something that Donald Trump has jumped on. And out of all the people to represent Christianity, he ain't the one. Well, it's convenient. You know, it's it's uh, convenience is, is what's involved here. It's it's uh, expedient. OK, and expedience is exactly what Donald Trump is about. When you're grifting, you promise everybody <laughs> everything. And if you can find something that they particularly feel strongly about that you can promise them, then you promise them that. So, well, Sandy, grifting quickly. What is that for well, people who grifting? Know. Grifting is the is the con man. A, a grifter is someone who <laughs> cons. Right. It's yeah, a chicken yeah. in every pot. Exactly. Uh, welcome. Uh, 855-752-4842. It's Tuesday. I mean, it's Tuesdays with my co-host, Sandy Williams. I promise you we'll get to you on the other side. Hang on, guys. You're an organ donor, right? Well, here's a tragic fact. Approximately 20 people die each day waiting for precious donated organs. You could make a life-saving decision simply by getting that important dot on your driver's license. That little dot shows those who need to know that you've made a decision to donate organs at a critical time. Go to HeroicDeed.com to learn more about the importance of organ donation and how you can make your wishes known. Talk to your family. Get the dot. Save lives. HeroicDeed.com Uno, dos, one, two, tres, cuatro. Pule, pule. Well, I know what this is. Uh, bule bule. That's in a different. That's the, that's not. That's that's not in the English. No, it's just the Spanish version. Is that the way you wanted it? Yeah, because the countdown in the beginning, which we missed, was oh. was the countdown in Spanish. Oh, all right. Welcome back to the Earl Ingram Show. As always, you can join us at eight five five seven five two. 4842 855 752 4842 is Tuesday. That means Tuesdays is my call, Sandy and Sandy, the music's Well, it's the countdown to the election. Everyone should get out and vote. We're counting down. We've got seven days. Uh, bully, bully. So, listen, we've been talking about, uh, if you're just joining us, Donald Trump's relationship to Christianity and, and, and how Donald Trump and many people have have seemed to disavow the relationship between church and state, which used to carry some weight. You mean disavow the, can dis the, the fact that there should be a disconnect? Yeah, between disconnect ch between church and state. Yeah, well. And and now that doesn't seem to be an issue. Well, the, the Christian nationalist movement basically sees it just the opposite. You know, they think that the First Amendment right to freedom of religion involves a freedom to install religion into uh, government processes, okay, which is kind of like turning its on, turning the uh, the constitution on its head in my mind because the the separation of church and state I think was designed to be absolute so you wouldn't get into a lot of gray areas and you know the ACLU has been out there for a long time kind of trying to police this and make sure that 
one of the areas that is protected carefully is the freedom of religion and the freedom from installing religion into government in such a way that it might become oppressive to the beliefs that other people might hold that are inconsistent. So one of the other issues here is religion and religions, Yeah. right? Yeah. Okay, Yeah. Uh, let's go to the phone lines. Let's go to Gary from Sussex. Good morning to you, Gary. You say what? Hey, hi, you guys. <clears throat> well, first of all, Donald Trump does does not represent uh, the Christian right. Okay, I don't. I think he he calls himself a Christian, and there's I can't judge it, so I really don't know. Only God will know. I don't follow Donald Trump. He's no snake salesman that. The Christian right is following like he's our the savior. It's not like that. They're supporting him, him, Gary. They support him. I su- I support him because, first of all, Kamala Harris doesn't even call herself a Christian because the other day <laughs> in, uh, what is it, lacrosse, when she went out there and some guy yells out, Jesus is Lord, and she says, hey, you're at the wrong rally here, buddy, you know. So she doesn't. So claim so to so be let me Christian. ask you before well, you go I, any further. I think, she, I think you, she does claim to be a Christian. Yes, yeah, she does. But before you go any further. Because a guy says Jesus is Lord, there are other people in the audience who don't agree with that. So, so is is she supposed to say yes? There are other people in the audience who don't agree with that, Gary. You could have said right on, and then just kept well, why going. would she say that? Well, There's anyway, other people. I mean, how how silly? Like, I mean, <laughs> like, you, 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 but go ahead, Gary. But but I I think I think you are out on a limb to try and accuse her of not being a Christian. I think this woman has had a history of uh, being a Christian. Yeah, okay. But going back to Donald Trump, uh, me being part of the Christian right, I, this is how I look at, at life. Okay, Donald Trump had a come-to-Jesus moment, being shot, getting hit in the ear, uh, one microsecond or a turn from being have his head completely blown off, and then another attempt on his life. So I, I believe that he's a changed person and if he had to relive his life all over again i don't think that he would have done half the stuff he did so let me so let me let me just respond to one thing quickly so a come to jesus moment means you change inside and the person that you are and so i haven't seen any change in him so when you say he's he's had this come to jesus moment you know like sandy said the humility the 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 Emp- empathy, empathy, compassion, all those things. Well, he has none of that. I mean, I think it's what's interesting is people want to attribute. I mean, there, but for the grace of God, he could have been shot in the head. Okay, so he he was lucky, but but luck doesn't carry with it necessarily a, a change in persona. I had there was a day when I was seventeen. I I had a come to Jesus moment when I was uh, seventeen. Okay. I'm 72 right now. I had that moment. Okay. And I did change my life. Okay, Gary. Thank you very much for the call. Let's go to Tim from New Berlin. Good morning to you, Tim. You say what? First of all, learn history. Uh, 1947, Plessy versus the United States. There is no such thing as uh, separation of church and state. It's the founding fathers, overwhelmingly Christian, decided that they did not want a, uh, a state church like the Church of England. That's what they put into the Constitution, freedom of religion, but no separation of church and state. That's a fallacy brought on by liberal cockroaches like yourself. Hey. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> uh, oh, why don't you tell us how you really feel? Uh, you know, but that's what we run into, man. You know, that's the reality. That's a MAGA guy. Well, Come I don't on. know. I just, uh, I, I think uh, civility was civility should reign here. Let's go to Tom from West Dallas. Good morning to you, Tom. You say what? Hey, good morning. You know, he told there's us to, a difference between Christians go, and— Go ahead. Oh, I'm going to say there's a difference between Christians and evangelicals. Trump just had a rally within the last week— a bu- with a bunch of uh, evangelicals, and they were all calling him Jesus. And it's on tape, you can find it. <laughs> so there are some nut jobs out there. But what I want to kind of say is, you know, these people who selectively read the Bible, um, it's like genocide is biblical. 
loving your enemy is biblical, but only one is Christ-like. Slavery is bi- bi- not biblical. Chain breaking is, bi- is biblical, but only one is Christ-like. Patriarchy is biblical. Counterculture elevation of woman is biblical, but only one is Christ-like. Retribution violence is biblical. Grace-filled restoration is biblical, but only one is Christ-like. Segregation is biblical. Unity is biblical, but only one is Christ-like. It just comes down to Christ transforms, not the Bible. But, you know, so it just it just drives me insane, all this stuff. And like this last caller, no, it is. It's, it's, it's separation from uh, government and the church. It is said there, I don't care what, he, what little blurb he read by some right-wing thing back then. There's a reason for this. is because we are not all Christian in this country. We have a huge Jewish population, a huge Muslim population. And again, which, which as Sandy was pointing out, which Christ are we following? The, the, the teachings of Lutherans or Catholics or, or uh, and, and all the others. Hey, hey Tom, so, thank you. Uh, thank you very much for the call, Sandy. That's the well, point well, you the, I guess the point is I don't want to be viewed as being anti-religion or anti-Christian in this conversation. You know, what we, what we, how this came up really was the conjunction of uh, Christianity into, into government and the whole notion of Christian nationalism, I think, is how we got merged into this. But, uh, and I think the question is, it's ironic that Donald Trump would become the paragon uh, figure for a movement that is premised on, for instance, Christianity. But, uh, you know, if we, the more love we talk, neighbor, the, the love more we, neighbor the more myself. we, yeah, the more we talk about this, the more it's possible, I suppose, to, to paint the people talking as people who are anti-religion. We're not anti-religion. No, I'm I, not anti-religion. No, we're not. And I'm not, not. You know, and I just think that religion does well to uh, proselytize amongst the people and to, to convert those to their religion as they see fit uh, and to be actively uh, involved in the community, the religious community in which they reside. The problem is when you export that into government, you know, and there are plenty of people who have been paranoid about, for instance, the exportation by Muslims of Sharia law into the government of the United States, uh, which, you know, is really the, the same thing that is the, that is the notion that is being uh, talked about by Christian nationalists of importing Christian principles into the, into the legal structure of the United States. You know, that sauce is for the goose and sauce is for the gander. All right, let's go to Linda from McClare. Good morning to you, Linda. Thank you very much for the call. You say what? Um, yeah, I got to tell you, um, a while ago, there was a guest on civic media, a woman who had grown up, I believe, in North Carolina with, with what you call national Christian nationalist parents. And she was extremely enlightening about what is going on with them. These, they, have, they have captured the word Christian. They are not, it is not a Christian, uh, a true Christian movement or whatever. There was a film in Eau Claire recently. I'm so sorry I missed it. I'm trying to find it. I hope we can show it. It's called Bad Faith. I don't know if you've heard about that, but it gives a whole history of how, how for decades this movement has been an infiltrating, how they've gotten uh, a list of people and they individually have contacted people anyway bad faith these people they have they have they have taken the word christian they are not christians well thank you very much for the call again you know this is not to condemn uh evangelical christianity it's the the fact that none of these things should even play a role in uh, determining who the president of the United States is going well, to be. Well, and I think we got into this because of my my discussion of the fact that I think Donald Trump seizes upon everything that's expedient to be uh, to make promises to everyone to make them the promises that they want to hear, and there are plenty of promises that the evangelicals would like to hear, and he's willing to provide to them. There are plenty of promises that everyone would like to hear, and and I think the the grift of Donald Trump is to promise everything without any clear uh, path to accomplishing any of them, but to allow each person who hears the promise they like 
to embrace that promise and say, he's my man, he's going to deliver on that promise, and all those other ones, those are just to get elected, okay? And everyone can come up with that. And, and like I said last week, we listened to Senator Ron Johnson make the same <laughs> kind of apologies for him. You know, he's not going to impose across-the-board tariffs. That's just talk. That's just negotiation. Well, what what of all these promises that Donald Trump is making are the real ones, okay? And which ones are just talk? And I think they're all just talk, except for when he gets into power, the ones that enhance Donald Trump power. And those are the ones that will get implemented. You know, uh, Sandy, this, um, again, for the sake of clarity, this is not about people being anti-Christian or saying one, one, um, one, one sect of Christianity is different than any other sect of Christianity. That's that's not what we're talking about. And and so, you know, that's a fight that's gone on long before you and I were here. And well, well, I know, but I mean, just the expedience, some of the point I was trying to make no, is I, I, the expedience of Donald Trump is demonstrated by how quickly he has receded from being the world's greatest champion on right to life and backed off on that as quickly as he sees a fit because of the politics of it, uh, you know, Roe v. Wade, like, like before that, before that decision happened, I predicted that when the dog caught the bus, <laughs> it was going to be a problem. I, I just think it's hard to say a guy who holds a Bible backwards and upside down and a guy who sells the Bible. I, for autographed, profit, autographed versions yeah, of the it, Bible, it, which it, struck me as kind of blasphemous. It, but. <laughs> Is a guy that should be held up, you know, uh, in Christendom. 855-752-4842. Guys, hang on. We'll come right and, back well, to And you. incidentally, anyone who wants a Bible for free can go to a hotel. The, Gideon, <laughs> the Gideons give them away. Donald Trump sells $67. them. $67. You're listening to Civic Media. Find the latest news, information, and archives of all your favorite shows on the Civic Media website, civicmedia.us. I don't know about you, man. I, I, I worry about you sometimes. Missing the countdown. <laughs> um, it, it, the, the music, uh, you know, Janet Jackson. Uh, oh, yeah, but but genres from everywhere. Me. <laughs> well. eight, eight five five seven. Five two forty eight forty two. Welcome back to the Earl Ingram Show. As always, you can join us. It's it's Tuesday. That means Tuesdays with my co-host Sandy. We just go right back to the phone lines. Uh, Mike from Kenosha. Good morning to you, Mike. Good, good morning, guys. Thanks for taking my call. As always, a, a quick question: Is there anything uh, closer to your heart than uh, your face? Is there anything more personal? In one's face. I can't think of one off the top of my head. When I listened to Gary in the, the other end of the break, uh, immediately when he began talking about, you know, Christianity and, you know, trying to justify Donald Trump's comments and platform, et cetera, he immediately uh, responded by attacking Kamala Harris and saying yes. she's not a Christian. Immediately. The first thing out of his mouth after you brought it up. And that's exactly why the founding fathers said no to this nonsense. It's nobody's business, your faith, but your own. True. And for somebody to come out there with a big stick and start swinging around and hitting people because they're not following in line with their own version of, of their faith or their Christianity is exactly what the founding fathers were guarding against. Exactly. Uh, you know, what we have found here, and, and thank you for the, the caller from Eau Claire, talked about the movie Bad Faith. That's where you're going to find a lot of these little nuggets that are so important that's being thrown in, in, in our faces uh, uh, on a regular basis. But the reason why I called was, is, you know what, we've all 
been complaining about for a long, long time, decades now, is how our societies become unequal. How certain things, certain norms like uh, separation of church and state um, are now, those lines are blurred and, and our whole system is under attack. Our whole American way of life as we've known it has been under attack. Um, it's because we are now an unequal society. Many people believe, many of the economists are saying that we are the most unequal society on earth. And so what many of us, I think, and I think your show, show represents is a protest against that. You know, we want to bring light to the, the to, to the real issues. We want to have healthy debates and discussions on what is relevant in our lives and, and what is ongoing that we're dealing with every day. And when they hijack, when, when one group hijacks things like Christianity, all it does is it throws everything into a whirlwind. We have to start all over again. So this has got to stop. Um, it just ha it has to stop. We have to control the media. We have to uh, regulate them so we can somehow get our fiduciary, you know, what we need to know, the public needs to know, first and foremost in front, instead of profit being first and foremost. Hey, 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 Mike. Thank you very much for the call. Uh, well said, as always. Let's go to Tom from L.A. Good morning to you, Tom. You say what? Tom? Let's go to Sam from McClare. Good morning to you, Sam. You say what? Okay, I, I kind of think Donald Trump is pretty much a uh, complete fraud. Uh, your lies. He lies about a lot of stuff, and they call it disinformation. It's not disinformation. It's lies. Come on, let's get down to business. Let's get down to reality here. Uh, those four guys on the commercial who said, uh, you know, Pence is not going to support them, uh, and that one guy said, the one thing Donald Trump believes in the most is Donald Trump. And those four guys know, know Trump real well because they sat in meetings with him a lot and all that. There's so many people who, uh, who bought into Trump's stuff, you know, they worked for him and stuff, and then they found out what he's really like, not, and then, then they don't want, don't want anything to do with him anymore. And, uh, okay, uh, I, I agree with that. Uh, the one thing Donald Trump believes in the most is Donald Trump, and I think he's mostly a complete fraud. He has, like, uh, no compassion or sympathy or empathy for anybody else. And that's why I'm going to vote for Camel Harris, probably. Hey, hey, Sam, thank you very much for the call. Really appreciate it, man. Thank you for listening. Sam is the kind of guy, Sandy, you can kind of tell. Just a hardworking guy who is not caught up in all these other things. But you heard what he had to say. Well, I do think that people should should sit up and wake up and listen to this person and put him into the category they would put him in were he not in the position that he's in in terms of being an ex-president and running for president. If they would simply meet this person and have the impression of this person that they would get from meeting him behaving as he does, he I don't think he would even be in contention, wouldn't even be in the thought process for a, an office like the presidency or much of any position of responsibility. But, uh, you know, I, I think the problem is that he's become a brand, and I think people should investigate within themselves what it is about that brand that they find appealing. Uh, and we can talk about that on the other side, but, uh, but I think that what that brand stands for is something that's entirely independent from who Donald Trump is. All right, 855-752-4842. It's Tuesday. That means Tuesdays with uh, my co-host Sandy Williams and you. The national news cycle never stops. 
but it can be hard to find news about your local community. Civic Media is dedicated to providing quality local and state news coverage across Wisconsin. With the Civic Media app, you can get notifications about local stories that matter to you and your community. Find the free Civic Media app in your phone's app store and choose notifications from the menu to tell us what kind of news you want to hear about. 